Hey there, we are going to take a look at starting our programming journey using IDE. It's an IDE is an integrated development environment, and it is the program that allows us to write code, just like Google Docs or Microsoft Word may allow us to write a paper or a letter. Uh, an IDE is a place that will put allow us not just to write code, but also check things like grammar and syntax uh, and allow us to run it. So we have a couple different options. And uh, we're going to start with a web-based IDE. And the web-based IDE we are going to use is called REPL. Uh, so I'm going to start a new window. And I'm going to type in REPL.IT and open it up. Now, uh, anybody with a Google account can log in just by clicking the Google icon. It's a single sign-on. And I already have some things in here, so I don't want you to worry about that. But I'm going to go to My REPLs. And again, I have some files in here, but just ignore it. It'll be blank the first time you get started. And uh, what you'll what you'll want to start with is by is to click New REPL. And the first thing it's going to ask you is what language you want to use. Uh, do you want to work in Java? Do you want to work in Python? Do you want to work in C or JavaScript? So uh, we're actually going to do three side by side. So you can kind of see each language as we go. So I'm going to open one with Java. And we'll call this the uh, Java test. And we'll create that REPL. And I'm going to make a new one. Well, let's just duplicate this window and see. It's probably going to give me back to Java. Let me go back to the main starting point. Oh, that's going to make me log in again. Oop. And my REPLs. Oh, let me duplicate this. That way I'm not and the same thing three times. So we're going to make a REPL that is Python. And we'll call this Python test. Great REPL. And we'll make a third one that is the JavaScript test. So we're going to go to scroll down. You got to go a little ways to JavaScript. And we'll call this a JS test. You're going to have to bear with me, too, because switching from language to language to language at the exact same time is a little goofy, uh, but uh, it, it really isn't too bad. And that's why we're going to be doing these side by side by side. So you can see that if you know one language, uh, you can really get used to any language. I'm going to try to squeeze these in so we can see them all at the same time. So I got Python here on my right. Oh, I don't want it to snap. So let me undo that real fast. I have uh, JavaScript in the middle, and I got Java on the left. Now, uh, you'll notice right off the bat that Java has a whole lot on the screen already, whereas JavaScript and Python do not. So one of the things to know about the Java programming language is there is a little bit more structure to the packaging of the code. Uh, but it's really not that bad once you get used to it. In fact, if I just make this window a little bit bigger, there's only a few lines in here. The first is naming the class. So that's the file that you're working in. The second line here it says public static void main string square bracket args. That looks like a lot. But really, it's just defining the main function in the program. So this main right here. And then saying everything from this curly brace to that curly brace is part of the main program. And everything from this curly brace to this curly brace is part of the main file, the, the main, uh, main class file. Uh, and in there, you see a system.out.println hello world. So let's unpack that real quick. System is the computer. Out is the output stream. And then print line says you want to print a line to the output stream. And in this case, we want to print the line hello world. Now, if I hit run, I look over in the terminal window or the console window and I see hello world, program works. All right now let's take a look at how to do the same thing in JavaScript. So JavaScript again, uh, there, you notice there's not a lot here just so uh, just yet. Uh, and JavaScript is typically used in web development. So you would have a JavaScript se a segment of code embedded in an HTML document, a website. But for right now, we're just going to say console. So again, that's the same thing that's this terminal window, dot log, and we're going to log the message, hello world. And I believe we need a semicolon here too. Let's try running it and see if it comes up. 
And there it is. All right, so we're able to print there. Now, you're looking at this, and it looks a lot shorter than all that. But again, I just want to uh, impress upon you that uh, these couple lines look really uh, significant when you only have a one-line program. But in the scheme of things, uh, it's really not that, too, that bad. And especially when you're using JavaScript, typically you want to have this JavaScript embedded in a web page that is also going to have more code wrapped around it. Now let's look at our third example, Python. And I have to remind myself what uh, the print statement is for Python. I believe it's just print and then hello world in quotes. Uh, but now we will not use a semicolon. So Python is the most stripped down syntactically. And when we hit run, oh, nope, doesn't like that. I think, oh, is it a print colon? Let's see. We'll try that instead. Uh, it's thinking about it. No, it doesn't like that. Is it parentheses? It may be parentheses because it may be a function. Let's see. Third time is the charm. There we go. Okay. Like I said, switching between three languages at once is uh, uh, a little tough from a syntax point of view, but the concept is the same. In each of these three languages, we printed a simple message, but we're starting to talk about variables and how you use a variable in a programming language. A variable is simply just a name given to a piece of information. So for example, instead of saying hello to the world, I may want to say hello to me. You know, have my computer greet me when I log on. So let's do that in each language. In Java, there are a couple parts to creating a variable. The first thing that you want, I'm going to put in what's called a, a comment. Uh, so this is a line that is ignored by the computer. And in uh, Java, you can do it with two slashes. So I'm going to put in a comment here that says uh, the, the parts of declaring and initializing a variable. So we first want to note the type. Then we want to have the name that we're going to give it. And if we're assigning a variable, we're going to have the assignment operator, operator followed by the value that we're assigning. Now that sounds like a lot, but if we are going to say something like my name, that would be text, and text in Java is referred to as strings or strings of characters. So I'm just going to write string with a capital S. Uh, the name I want to give this piece of information. So I'm going to call it maybe first name because I'm going to be referring to my own first name. And it's important, uh, number one, not to put a space between words that constitute a variable's name. That confuses the computer because now it thinks you're talking about multiple pieces of information. Instead, we can concatenate those words and uh, show the difference between them by using a capital letter. So in this case, I had first with a lowercase f and then name with a capital N. So uh, that it distinguishes between uh, you know, first name as opposed to just a jumble of letters. Now the next thing I need is my assignment operator, which in Java is just an equal sign. And I'm going to write Kevin because that is my first name. And in Java, every line ends with a semicolon. So I'll throw a semicolon in there. And now what we could do is down in this message, instead of saying hello world, let's say hello. So we're going to print the message hello. And we're going to put in a plus sign, say add on to that string first name. So what we would expect to see now is hello Kevin instead of hello world. So let's try running it and see if that comes up. There we go. All right, so we have mastered the art of using variables in Java. Let's take a look at JavaScript. So same thing, let's start with a um, comment. Oh, let me actually get on here first. So we'll start with a comment, and I think it's also double slash in JavaScript, it is. So here we're going to uh, identify that we're creating a variable. So first it's just var. This is a little bit different than in Java. In Java, we're going to designate whether we're talking about, uh, or what type of variable we're talking about. So for example, a string of text, or a number, or a single letter, or some other more complicated object. We, when we declare a variable, we describe the type right off the bat. In JavaScript, it's a little bit more dynamic. 
which means we don't need to specify exactly what type of information we're referring to up front. We just say we're dealing with some type of variable. Uh, the next thing we need again is the name, the assignment operator, and then finally the value. So similarly, we're gonna write instead of string, we're just gonna write var here for variable. Name, we can do the same thing, first name. Assignment operator is still an equal sign. And then we can still write Kevin because I have not changed my name. And then let's go down to console.log. And I believe in JavaScript, Cat Nation is also a plus sign. Let's see. Perhaps I'll break this. Hey, look at that. So uh, you can see, once we get past these first couple lines in Java, Java and JavaScript are really, really similar. We haven't really made any major changes yet. Now, when you get to Python, this will be a little bit different. Again, Python is stripped down the most syntactically, uh, and we'll, we can get into that more when we start seeing how to identify code blocks. But for now, let's just go into the Python terminal, or sorry, uh, coding window. And uh, here, we're gonna have a different comment. First of all, it's a hashtag, I believe. And we're, um, we don't actually need to identify the type at all. So there's no identification. You just have a name for a variable, the assignment operator, and then the value. So uh, Python is even more dynamic than JavaScript. You don't even need to tell it that you're creating a variable. Just by naming something that hasn't been uh, directly named yet, it assumes it is a new variable. So here we can write, well, value, and let's go here. So here we can write first name. And again, I'm taking the, the uh, naming convention is the same across all three languages. We typically start variables with a lowercase letter. And if the variable name is going to be more than one word, the next word in that name uh, gets an uppercase. Sometimes in um, web development, you'll see things like this where first underscore name. Uh, and there, there are times in which we use an underscore to separate words instead of uh, uppercase, lowercase, but we don't need to get into that right now. But let's go back to Python. First name equals Kevin. All right. And now instead of print, or print hello world, we are going to say print Kevin. And then uh, here, I believe it is a comma instead of a plus sign. So let us now put in first name, and we will try running it. There we go. All right, so we just uh, printed hello world in three different languages. We also introduced a variable in three different languages and then concatenated that variable into a print statement in three different languages. So uh, this is a good first glance at the difference between JavaScript, Java, and Python. And for all of these, we use the web-based IDE REPL. Uh, it's probably going to be the easiest solution for any of our programming needs in a, an introductory programming class. Uh, however, if you want to get into more uh, robust IDEs, the vast majority of them are platform-based. So something like NetBeans or Eclipse would be uh, something you would download and install either on a Windows, Linux, or Mac operating system. Uh, but that is a good introduction so far, so we'll leave it at that. I hope that this made sense and that you were able to read all the text on this small screen. All right, bye now.